guys, Super Joe Key at Joe Key Kung Fu in Boynton Beach, Florida, with uh, our, one of our instructors, Jacob. Uh, we're going to continue the Jiu Jitsu for Idiots video, and I really hate saying that, but it kind of scares me when I see certain teachers teaching techniques that are similar to Jiu Jitsu and they give it a different name, and uh, they're dangerous. Uh, when you've been fighting and rolling for a long time, you know what works and what doesn't work, and a lot of these people, I believe, are not really fighting and rolling, and I don't like calling people out. I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, it looks like it's dangerous because their students might go to another gym and see how good they are and maybe even get hurt. So you got to be very careful. So today we're going to cover the arm bar. I recently saw a video uh, that was teaching arm bar, but they really didn't teach how to get into it very well. And when they were teaching even the technique of the arm bar, it was, it was very poor. It's something very easy to get out of and even the execution of the technique in certain spots was downright uh, terrible. <laughs> I hate to, to say that. So I'm going to explain how to secure the armbar, and we're going to work this position first. I'll have Jacob Lay, this is kind of how the instructor was explaining it, to do the armbar, you know, and they were explaining the mechanics of the elbow, and yes, it is difficult when person rolls. But before I do any type of submission ever, it's position that's most important. So as I was learning in jiu-jitsu, Position before submission. And for those of you that don't know me, my background is Chinese Kung Fu. And I like fighting, but to me, it's always gonna be more important about me and winning. So when people ask me now what my style is, I'll say winning as a joke, and that'll lead to a conversation of, you know what, I just wanna be able to survive and fight well, you know? So I don't care what it's called or where it's from. You know, I just wanna win. So when you're doing these techniques, make sure that you're doing them against a live opponent. So again, the elbow is here. If it slips and rolls, okay, no problem. Position before submission. I need to secure this person before I can tap them out or submit them. So okay, when I have the arm like this, uh, the instructor was saying to get in this position here and to do this. Now, if you know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, this move definitely is not very accurate, very secure. Maybe back in the 50s when, you know, or the 40s, but not anymore. The reason being is when I cross my feet, I'm not able to squeeze my thighs together as much as when I have my feet open, then I can squeeze my thighs. So in this position, if I get really tight, I need to get my legs to help me secure this arm. Obviously my opponent's gonna be fighting back. They're not gonna be just a nice little student and, and do everything I say. So when I secure this with my legs like this, he doesn't even need that arm. Watch, when I squeeze my legs together, it's just easy for him to get out of. So, you know, if you're watching this, and this is you, don't do this anymore. Or, you know what, try. What happens is if I can straighten my legs out, okay, try to get your arm out. It's not as easy for him, but now he can get up. <laughs> Just go ahead, he brings his feet over here, and up and up, up and, yeah, <laughs> I lost it this way. Okay, omoplata, you know, or whatever. But he's gonna be able to get out, because I lose the position or the control, okay? So, if you unlock the feet, and squeeze the knee together, it's very secure. Also, I can get tight, okay? And I wanna be underneath that shoulder. Okay, this particular instructor was like pushing the, the guy away with his legs and was all the way down like this, you know? I don't wanna use my, my hoozy watsy, my private, to break this guy's elbow. I want this guy elbow up high. And when I go up here, like I won't even need to go all the way down to get the tap. Another thing too is grabbing. This is like a last case scenario. A lot of the time when I'm here like this, I'll use I'll use my arms, or sometimes I'll even go behind here like this, okay, and get the lock. Well, anything to secure this, and I want to go tight, okay? So don't cross your feet. doesn't allow you to close your, your, your thighs together and, con and control the opponent. Now, let's say, you know, we get into this position and his arm starts to roll. Do not change your position here to get the fulcrum point on this leg because I've lost complete control over my opponent. I'm even giving him my back in this case, and that's terrible. Look, he's even got my arm. He's gonna pull my arm, and he's just, it's gonna have fun all day. So the submissions are like candy for children. Everybody wants the submission. If you don't know how to scramble and control the person's uh, body and get good positioning, you have no business even trying to do a submission. And I've seen a lot of people making fun of uh, the arm bar or jujitsu for street fighting and it doesn't work. Well, there are some techniques. I'm not going to jump into an arm bar like this on the street. This is like a technique that happens in a, in a different position. So before I go into how to get into this arm bar, don't cross the feet. Unlock the feet, keep the knees in. Get really tight underneath that guy's shoulder. Make it very difficult. When you're here like this, you shouldn't have to go all the way down to get that tap. 
If that doesn't work, boom, here. If you get in this position, okay, and you're holding, see if you can use your wrist. We call it like a vampire type grip, get real tight. If he starts rolling the elbow, okay, I control the elbow and the fist to get the actual point and then get the, the tap, okay? So next what I wanna talk about is how to get into this position. This position usually comes from doing uh, the arm bar out of the guard, okay? All right, so close guard, right? Everybody does it. Close guard is great when you're if you're on your back and you want you you don't want to stay here. And also the close guard, I, in order to do a submission, I have to unlock it. Okay. So this particular video I saw, the guy grabbed the person's arm, which is definitely going to be very difficult to do. And for some, I don't know how he decided to do it, but he alley ooped up like this and pushed the guy away. See how far away he is, and I'm using my <laughs> my 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 cash and prizes to, to break the guy's elbow. I don't want to do that. Okay, so it's very sloppy, and also I don't have much leverage because as soon as he gets stuck into this technique, he's going to think of how can he get out. He's going to try to get out of this position somehow. Yeah, see, and if I'm not like putting a lot of weight on him, I just given up control now. Now I got to fight all over again. And for those of you that roll, you know when you're the beginner, it sucks. It's a lot of work, so uh, don't, don't be so in a rush to do a submission. So watch how I do this. I'll show a really basic way. When I'm here like this and I got his, his lock, I want to break the posture. Get this guy to break the posture, okay? So a lot of the times you could use this hand, and then what I could do is grab that wrist and elbow. Or watch this. Sometimes I use this hand, and then this one goes behind his elbow. See that? Now look, left foot on the hip. Now, if you notice, there's no space between my leg and his body. I'm here like this, all right? I'm gonna use my foot to push my hips closer to him, not further away, closer and pivot, okay? I can even grab my own arm, my leg. Some people call rubber guard, okay? I'm, I'm not an expert, just showing you the basic. Hold here, it's very difficult now for him to posture up. See, it's very difficult, I'm very heavy now. Okay, I control his neck and head, breaking the posture still. I get my leg right around it tight. Squeeze the knees together. Look, got the tap. I don't need to go into that position on the floor. That is not a, a, an advantage position. It's a like, oh crap, I'm in this position, now I'm gonna do it differently. Now I take this hand, if, if, if I'm having a hard time and it's, it's not working or I feel like he's too strong and can stand up, I put this hand here and then I sweep him this way. Get real tight, squeeze the knees together, look. So if I'm here like this, the tap will happen even before my back touches the floor. So I hope this video kind of gives you some light on it. I'm not an expert in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but the experience I had with it, with it is I fought and in 10 seconds I was tapping out. So instead of just saying, nah, I'm not gonna worry about it, I worry about it. I, I train, I've been learning Jiu Jitsu since the late 90s or whatever. I recently got my purple belt. Today is what, December 23rd, 2015. If you're a Sifu in Kung Fu or a black belt in another style and you don't really know grappling techniques, it's okay to be a student again. You know, to learn is to grow. And that way, take more responsibility of what you're teaching to your students. Be very careful. I'm Joe Keat, and this is Jacob Isaacs. Thank you very much for watching Jiu Jitsu for Idiots. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but just be careful what you teach. Have a great holiday and Happy New Year. We'll see you soon.